So next up is Timothy Hines from the Jackson Lab, uh, who will talk about ATF-4 as a therapeutic target for Charcot-Marie tooth disease type 2D. Thanks everyone for being here and uh, thanks for inviting me to come share my work. Um, so uh, this is a picture from the roof of our lab. We have some pretty nice views up in Bar Harbor. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Charcot-Marie tooth disease. If you've never heard of it, you're not alone. It's a rare disease, uh, rare neuromuscular disease. It's also the most common inherited peripheral nervous system disease and it affects around 1 in 2,500 people worldwide. It causes pro progressive degeneration of motor and sensory axons and it usually affects the longest axons first, which innervate your hands and feet. Uh, it's genetically and phenotypically heterogeneous, so onset can range from childhood to late adulthood. There can be both motor and sensory involvement. Symptoms can be very mild or, or very extreme, like complete paralysis. And this is one of the uh, classic symptoms of CMT called foot drop, where the tibialis anterior muscle is too weak to lift the front of the foot while walking. And causative mutations have been identified in over 100 genes so far. Uh, there are two major types of CMT. Uh, demyelinating, demyelinating CMTs are called type 1, and axonal CMTs are type 2. And as the names imply, the, the demyelinating CMTs affect the myelin sheath around the axon, and axonal CMTs affect the axon itself. Uh, I have an asterisk here because there's actually several different types of CMT based on inheritance pattern and uh, involvement of other systems, and then several dozens of subtypes based on the exact genetic cause. Uh, and none of them have any af approved form of treatment so far. Uh, CMT type 2D is one of the subtypes. Uh, it's caused by dominant mutations in glycyl tRNA synthetase, or GARS. Uh, it's an axonal neuropathy. It causes motor and sensory deficits. Uh, and we have three mouse models of uh, GARS-mediated neuropathy, or CMT type 2D. Uh, C201R, which is uh, from a mutagenesis screen, P278KY, which is a really severe early onset allele that uh, spontaneously arose in a mouse colony, and then Delta ETAQ, which is also a severe early onset uh, CRISPR knock-in of a patient allele. Uh, and the Delta ETAQ allele is the one I use the most in, in my studies. Uh, so GARS is a housekeeping gene. It's critical for protein synthesis. So it binds to a tRNA uh, gly and glycine and charges the tRNA with glycine so that EEF1A can take it to the ribosome and the ribosome can translate glycine codons. So protein synthesis can happen and you get happy, healthy motor neurons. So how do these mutations cause CMT type 2D? Uh, in 2021, our lab, in collaboration with Eric Storkebaum's lab in the Netherlands, published a pair of papers in science detailing our proposed mechanism where the mutant enzyme sequesters tRNAs, causing ribosomes to stall at glycine codons, which activates the integrated stress response. And this project was uh, led by a former graduate student in the lab, Emily Spaulding. Uh, so if you're a visual learner like I am, here's a, a visual uh, of our mechanism. So the mutant enzyme binds to the tRNA, and then whether it charges it or not, it doesn't let go of the tRNA. So the ribosome can't decode glycine codons and it stalls. Phosphorylating GCN2, which activates the integrated stress response by phosphorylating the translation initiation factor EIF2-alpha. That leads to two major cellular consequences, decreased cap-dependent translation and selective translation of the transcription factor ATF4 and stress response genes. And this somehow collectively leads to neurodegeneration. So one of the questions we had was if the integrated stress response was helping or hurting, because you can imagine trying to put the brakes on something that's bad could be helpful. Uh, so we knocked out that activating kinase GCN2, uh, and by virtually every measure, the mice got better. So uh, in this graph here, the black line is a wild-type mouse, the blue line at the bottom is our mutant mouse, and then the red line is the mutant mouse with GCN2 knocked out. So they get better at an inverted wire hang test. They get better uh, nerve conduction velocity, which is a neurophysiological measurement used in the clinic. And their nerve histology looks a lot better. And uh, knocking out GCN2 prevented activation of the integrated stress response in motor neurons of the spinal cord. So going back to our me mechanism, it seems like targeting GCN2 is, uh, is a pretty good therapeutic target 
but it's still unclear what's going on downstream, what the decreased camp dependent translation is doing, and what the stress response genes are doing. So I wanted to know how ATF4 expression contributes to the CMT2D phenotype, or if it's all really related to translation. So I have been generating mice that overexpress ATF4 specifically in cholinergic neurons, including motor neurons. Uh, so I'm using a cre lock system. Uh, so I have a, a cre re recombinase enzyme driven by a chat promoter, uh, and then a, a flag tag human ATF4 transgene with a flock stop cassette in front of it. So anywhere the cre is expressed, it'll remove the stop and allow expression of the transgene. So I've gotten some interesting results. It, this, it seems like the mice get a CMT-like phenotype. Uh, so they have reduced male and female body weight. They have reduced nerve conduction velocity. Uh, the cross-sectional area of the, the motor branch of the femoral nerve, which innervates the quadriceps, is decreased, as you can see here. Uh, so from left to right, wild type, chat CRE alone, uh, the transgene alone, which shouldn't be expressed without CRE, and then both of those genes in combination to, to generate the overexpressor. So ATF4 overexpression seems to be deleterious. I wanted to know if ATF4 knockout could be beneficial. And uh, luckily at the Jackson Laboratory, you can just breed a whole bunch of mice together and see what happens. Uh, even if only one in 16 is actually what you want. Uh, so that's what I've been doing, and luckily all the breeding's been worth it. Uh, there's only a modest effect on body weight uh, with homozygous knockout. So I'll, I'll walk you through the groups here real quick. From left to right uh, are wild-type mice. Uh, the red is our uh, Gars mutant mice. The blue is ATF4 homozygous knockout with wild-type Gars, so, so no disease-causing mutation. And then heterozygous and then homozygous ATF4 knockout with our, our mutant gene. Um, and so there's not a huge effect on body weight, uh, but nerve conduction velocity, which is the, the test used in the clinic, is restored back to wild type levels. And looking at neuromuscular junction function, uh, in, uh, so, so I wanted to look at the, the function of the neuromuscular junction also. Uh, so one way we do that is a technique called repetitive nerve stimulation, which is almost exactly what it sounds like. You stimulate the nerve repetitively, and each time it should dump a bunch of acetylcholine into the, the NMJ, and it should bind to the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle, and the muscle depolarize and contract. Um, so we, we stimulate 10 times really fast, and uh, in a wild-type mouse, the 10th stimulus should be about the same amplitude as the first stimulus. Uh, and this is work John, done by a graduate student in the lab, Jonathan Funky. Uh, and... In our, uh, our mutant mice, the Delta ETA2 mice, we see about a 40 to 50% decrement in that the amplitude of the, the muscle contraction. And in our homozygous ATF4 knockout with uh, the GARS mutation, it's restored back to wild type. So it looks like the neuromuscular junctions are, are doing a lot better with ATF4 knockout. Uh, and then looking at cross sections of the, the nerves from these mice, the, the femoral nerve, I've got the motor branch and the sensory branch here. And I see improvements in both the motor and sensory branch, even though I'm only targeting the motor branch with the ATF4 knockout. So I'm not sure if this is uh, because of some sort of feedback between the sensory system and the motor system, or if there are uh, maybe a subset of sensory neurons that express chat at some point in development and get ATF4 knocked out then. So uh, some next steps I'm taking, I'm, I'm going to submit a big RNA-seq project to compare uh, the expression of ATF4 target genes under a bunch of different conditions, including the overexpression, the GARS mutant, uh, and ATF4 knockout. I'm going to do aminofluorescence and FUNCAT uh, for neuromuscular junctions, possibly IF2 alpha and translation to see if translation levels are, uh, are still down. I want to test ATF4 inhibitors in CMT2D mice. This is something I'm trying right now. Uh, there are two that I know about. Tomatidine, which is naturally derived product from green tomatoes, and AT9283, which is very much not natural. <laughs> uh, and then I want to test the mechanism in a human system using human iPSC-derived motor neurons. That's also something I'm working on right now. And then looking at ATF4 and other CMT-relevant cell types like Schwann cells or sensory neurons. And I do have a little bit of preliminary data on that, showing that ATF4 overexpression in Schwann cells drives demyelination. Um, so with that, I'd like to acknowledge the lab, including my, my PI, Rob Burgess, who's been an excellent mentor. 
Uh, this was at our annual lab ice fishing trip. Uh, the Jack Scientific Services are great. They do a lot of work for me, uh, so I don't have to do it myself. Uh, the ASBMB Mo Mosaic Scholars Program has been really helpful, and my funding sources, including my recently funded uh, K99. So, any questions? Yes. Are you able to take advantage of any uh, conservation or lack of conservation in other organisms? I only have heard mouse, but it seemed like a very conserved kind of pathway. So are you able to extract anything out of other animals? No, I haven't tried that or looked at that, actually. Do you have any suggestions? Uh, like flies and like zebrafish and like... Yeah, so I do know uh, there, there's been a lot of a lot of work with like the GARS mutations in, in flies, and they do see activation of the integrated stress response in, in flies. And so our collaborator on the, the science paper is actually is a fly lab. They, they did most of their work in flies and did some like transgenic overexpression of tRNAs to show that it rescues also. And so, yeah, I think I think it is pretty important for a lot of organisms. So I noticed that you have a partial rescue in some of the models, and are you exploring with your uh, RNA-seq what other factors are, are deficient so that those could be replenished, for example? Yeah, so uh, one, one thing that, that, uh, that's important is that I'm only knocking out ATF4 and motor neurons, and in our mouse model, the motor neurons and the sensory neurons are affected. Um, and there might also be a slight disruption of the myelin also. So I'm not I'm not targeting any of those. Uh, I I could add a couple more cream mice and you know try to make it more complicated, but <laughs> I'm trying to wind things down and finish my postdoc. So uh. <laughs> very important. Yes. Uh, question. Yes. Yeah. So um, very nice. Um, so is the hmm. anyway is the CFT model does it show a progressive um, over time, and then when you see a restoration or a suppression, um, is there a particular time window that you're seeing um, that rescue? Yeah, so we, we do see a progression. Um, it seems to be mostly, it mostly progresses through like early adulthood in, in the mice, early adulthood. Uh, and, then, and then it kind of seems to, to level off a bit. I, I will say uh, one thing that seems to get worse is like the, the actual gait of the mice. Uh, that seems to get worse over time, but like the neurophysiology and, and things like that don't seem to change that much after like mid-adulthood. Um, and for, for all the data I showed today, that was all at nine weeks of age. Um, I have a bunch of data at six months of age and some data at a year of age also that I'm collecting and looking at that. But uh, we've definitely, with other, with other uh, interventions, therapeutic interventions, we've definitely seen the most benefit when we treat like really early, like with gene therapy, P0, stuff like that. Other questions? Any, anyone else? Okay. Yes. I, I guess just uh, broadly, I was curious if, about uplifting athletes. If you have one, one minute, could you tell us what yeah. that is? Yeah, so uh, they gave me my first postdoc funding. Uh, they're uh, an organization that supports rare disease research, um, and so they partner with patient advocacy groups like the CMTA um, and try to fund uh, early career researchers and also try to fund some, some more translational research. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.